Great. Um, so hi, everyone. Nice to um, oh, thank you for inviting me uh, to come and speak today. So uh, my name is Cara and I am the Food and Equality Officer for Whole Food Partnership. And today I'm going to be talking to you about the structure of our partnership and specifically our Food Alliance, which is based around trying to um, create a, a food poverty action plan for the entire city with uh, an equal amount of stakeholders and um, engagement opportunities throughout the, the process of, of the development of the plan. So before I um, go on to the Food Alliance, I just want to give you a brief, a brief overview of what the whole food partnership is. It is, or I'm sure there's a lot of um, food partnerships already in this call, but um, our specific structure is that we are hosted by Rooted in Hull, which is a urban agriculture uh, project uh, where you can see the lovely carrots on the screen are being uh, pulled from. And um, we're part funded by Hull City Council and Sustainable Food Places. Okay, so <clears throat> today I, I wanna be specifically talking to you about our Food Alliance. So I guess think of the whole food partnership as the, the network um, where, which basically encompasses anyone who is interested in food. So that could be uh, citizens, volunteers, local businesses, um, VCS sector workers. Um, but the Food Alliance is specifically based around um, food poverty and food insecurity. So at the beginning of this year, we recognized that there was a serious need for a cohesive approach to understanding um, food poverty and food insecurity in our city. We recognised that there was a lot of um, quite a few like pop up shops that were happening uh, as a consequence of uh, COVID-19 and, and need dramatically rising in the city uh, for um, affordable and nutritious food. Um, and we realised that no one was really monitoring this and there wasn't a clear kind of plan within the council to understand where we go post COVID really. So, we set up a alliance in January of 2021 this year. And so far we've collected uh, all the stakeholders that you can see on screen. Um, we have a good number of, or the majority in fact, if not all the food banks in the city who are taking part. We also have the Citizens Advice Bureau. We have representatives from public health, um, fair share and we also have um, Cranswick, who is the largest meat producer in the UK, but they have seven factories in Hull and employ, I think it's 7,000 upwards um, of the population in Hull. So um, we've invited them along to attend our meetings also. So that's the makeup of the Alliance. Um, so just to tell you a bit about what the Alliance is and what we're moving towards. Um, as you can see in nice, uh, in a big shiny picture there, we're working extremely closely with uh, the toolkits that Sustain have developed on their website um, to produce our food poverty action plan. And honestly, I, I can't recommend their kind of free resources and tools that they have available. Also on um, Food Power's website, there's, to be honest, starting this um, plan it was quite uh, overwhelming to think of okay we have to we have to build a food poverty plan based on nothing that has come before and um, think strategically of how to build in um, community ownership over everyone who um, is working um, to help with food access across the city so by following this plan we have first started with collecting or kind of bringing people together within the Food Alliance and then going through a series of uh, data collection processes whereby we are distributing um, social surveys to understand how uh, COVID has affected people's food access in the city. So we're working with the University of Hull to also do this um, so that we've got uh, like the ethics approval behind our social surveys. And we're also working with the council to not only user surveys, but to get some qualitative research. So um, the number of uh, free school meals that are being accessed, um, number of people on um, benefits in certain areas of the city so that we can have some ward by ward data to back up or 
basically to provide us with a framework to understand what we're working with before we look to develop some recommendations. So the next step, I guess, after the data collection is presenting the findings to a local summit. So asking stakeholders who are part of the Food Alliance to develop some recommendations, given that they are essentially the workers who are on the ground seeing this type of, um, seeing the fallout of COVID day to day um, in the impact of people that are coming into their food banks. And then they can provide us with recommendations of how they think we can best help the city moving forward. So the aim is to present the data and then break the alliance into working groups so that each, each individual organization who has an interest in a certain area can kind of help us come together and co-create a, a citywide action plan with recommendations um, from across the city and kind of a sense of ownership throughout really. That's, that's really the key aim. Um, so alongside the action plan that we're developing with the Food Alliance, we've also looked to develop a campaign called Nurture Hall, which the tagline is uh, a growing force. So as you can see uh, from the pictures on screen, we've decided to primarily focus this campaign at the moment on young people. This is because as a demographic, we've, um, realize that they are the most likely to be affected negatively and economically by the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I think the figures in Hull are something like it's uh, youth unemployment is expected to grow by 30% by the end, of, um, the end of lockdown, which is a huge amount and obviously means that with a lack of access um, to uh, funding, it means there's more potential to be moving towards foods that are ultra processed, not necessarily healthy, healthy and nutritious. So we've decided to focus our um, program specifically on young people um, by doing some engagement workshops with young people across the city, employing local artists to co-produce uh, action packs or activity packs, which are gonna go in um, food parcels with one of the, uh, the largest uh, food possible distributors um, in the city called the Warren Project. So we're working with the Warren Project on this. As you can see, there's um, the type of activity that we're planning on doing um, uh, as part of the activity pack. The, I guess, the long-term other objectives that we have is to produce a food inequality podcast with the Warren because they actually have um, a studio set up and then some lived experience workshops too, so that we can understand a little bit more um, about, um, I guess, to go alongside the surveys that we're distributing in order to make sure that throughout the heart of our work on the food action plan, uh, it's gonna be kind of brought through people who are experiencing food insecurity to make sure that uh, they're at the heart of what our work is about. So, there's a quick kind of uh, sneak peek of what the activity packs look like as of now. Um, we're actually going to print in a couple of days, but um, as you can see, it's kind of, it's all about getting young people motivated to join the good food movement, to get them engaged with what's happening and to make them feel less on a path of um, resilience, but we want to kind of push resistance. So we want to kind of make, make young activists really that, that want to push towards um, having food as a right in our city, basically. Um, this is another part of the project that we're working on too. So to the left, you'll see our Nurture Hall logo, which we've been developing with an organization called Creative Briefs. Creative Briefs is an excellent organization in Hull that, um, that employs young people with learning disabilities to produce um, creative logos. So everything that we're doing through and through is lo local and we're making sure that we're employing um, local companies in the process. Um, and then to the right is the, the bare bones of what we're working on to um, at the moment to kind of provide a, a virtual food hub um, on our website. So we want to make sure that all of the food provisions are mapped in the city so that everyone knows where to go. Um, if, they, if they do need food access, there's also healthy start vouchers um, are mapped on there, which, which um, cities or which shops uh, accept them 
in the city. And then finally, we have a community allotment, allotments on there too. So that's it. Um, thank you very much for listening. And if you have any questions, then I'd be keen to answer them. <laughs>